racing in there to get a loose puck. And he fired it home for Canada to bring back that two-goal lead. The Soviet defenseman isn't quite ready here. He doesn't realize initially that the puck got in behind him. And Paul Henderson makes a terrific move. Threaded the needle perfectly. Kretschak comes out, covers the angle perfectly, and Paul Henderson threaded the needle with a super shot in the far corner. 13.47, Paul Henderson got that two-goal lead back for Canada, and now it's 4-2 to two for Canada. Henderson getting it, and Harlamov had previously at 12.56 scored for the Soviet, with Mihailov getting the assist. Both great goals. Now it's 4-2, to two and Parisi got to center ice, only to be checked by Lebedev. And the uh, Canadian team still holding the whip hand here, but it's still close. Anything could happen yet. A cleared pass to Anderson. Goes astray. Anderson, 22, trying it again. So we have had six new players team in their Canada. tonight. Goal scored by... Number 19, Paul Henderson. This is number six, Ron Ellis. And number 28, Bobby Clark. At 1347. Henderson team, from Ellis and Clark. Canada, le numéro 19, Paul Henderson. Avec l'aide du numéro 6, Ron Ellis. Et du numéro 28, Bobby Clark at 13 minutes 47 seconds. From the puck is cleared to center ice. Esposito going down. Made the pass to the point. Tried to follow through for a loose puck, which didn't occur. Lebedev gets that puck out over the line. A squeeze play here. And Chatelov tried to pull his way through, but was squeezed out and didn't get a direct shot in the goal. Esposito covering his man. They're bumping there on the side. Lebedev, 23. Here's a shot. And he scores! A, a carom shot. Went from the blue line there. It was Vasiliev that uh, fired from the blue line. And I believe it went off the Canadian player. This is a deflected goal. Tony Esposito really didn't have any chance in this. Vasiliev lets a good shot go. Tony Esposito makes his move in anticipation of where the puck was going. It deflects into the far corner. Valery Vasiliev, number six. Vasiliev at 14.59, bringing the Soviet within one goal of the Canadian team. Now it's Rattel. Starting back with Frank Mahovlich, getting right in on goal, right in! Oh, and Kretschak was able to cover the angle as the big game went roaring in. Mahovlich again going in back of the goal. They're trying to dig that puck out, but couldn't. And the Soviet come right back. Maltsev to center ice, going over the line, gets turned around. They still have the puck, just for a moment, though. Mahovlich trying to get that pass. Over to Quart Y.A. failed and was offside. With the score, Canada four and the Soviets three. This is game three from Winnipeg. And du numéro six, Vasiliev, et du numéro Already for the uh, face-off at the Soviet zone. On that last scoring play, the, uh, the shot was fired by Vasiliev from the blue line, but it hit apparently Lebedev and caromed into the net. Now then, the puck goes into the Soviet zone. Bergman took his shot wide of the net. So that scoring play at 14.59. Lebedev from Vasilya for the Soviet, making it 4-3. to three. The puck hit Lebedev uh, instead of a Canadian player. They're all piled up in front of the net. Esposito had no chance. Mihailov getting it. Demolchev, here's another chance, a shot, and that was a good save on the play as the Soviet are starting to move ahead a bit. Puck goes down the ice to Cheko, going back for it, picks it up, and Bill White 
and Pat Stable that are now on the Canadian defense. 3.27 left in the period, and the puck goes into the Canadian defense. Four to three for Canada, and the Soviet keep pegging away there, getting those chances and taking advantage of them. An interesting little slogan up on the end of the rink. All set for the face-off. Back to Stapleton, number three for Canada. Over on the right side, Bill White. Shoots one into the corner. Kuzkin, number four, played it ahead to Mishakov. Up to the blue line, to center to Yakushev. Over on the wing, recovered by White. Lost again. Then they pass back, and it's lost. And the Canadian team break back, Esposito. Clearing over on the left wing. Into the corner, Reese. Very strong, knocked Kuskin over. The puck is still in there. Reese, 22 for Canada. Right front of Esposito. Here's a shot. Oh, and it went off the stick. As Kuskin had it pretty well covered on the play. Petrov was standing beside him. Canada keep that puck in there. Into the corner, Esposito. With Reese, and the puck is recovered by the Soviet. As Petrov making a pass to the left wing over the Canadian line. They're trying to set her out in a leg. Petrov had another try. Took a shot instead. Carried in back of the goal. Bill White cleared it over the line. Yakushev has Greasy well shackled on the play. Esposito takes a flip shot. It's deflected. And Petriak was able to cover very neatly. The strength of Phil Esposito, when he gets a hold of that puck, they're running at him. They've got the sticks up. They're giving him the elbows. But Phil still manages to keep that puck up in front of him and always ready to make the play on goal. The face off will be to the right of Trutriac. Rattel is now at center ice for Canada. Number 18, Mahavlich on the wing. Cornoyer on the other. There's a shot right on there when the point let it go for the blue line. That was close. Comes out again. Soviet recover. They break fast. Three of them up to center ice. Going over the line. Badenov is forced into the corner. He gets it back to Lebedev. The shot went wide. And this so-called kid line is certainly moving around. This line played last year at the World Student Games in Lake Placid. And they were the top line for the Soviets at that tournament. And have earned the right to make this national team of theirs. Uh, Shatilov is on there with uh, Vasiliev, and that's a new combination for tonight's game. The Soviets have six new players in there. Puck goes into the corner. It's passed in front. It rolls loose. Here's another pass right in front. He's got the score! And they tied it up hot enough. Let it go almost before he could move. And Bodnov has tied the score for the Soviet. Bodnov positions himself perfectly here, and Lebedev gets him the puck. Now watch him stand in position. Number 24, a quick shot, and he beats Phil es or Tony Esposito up into the top corner. Esposito's glove moved on it, but not quickly enough. So now it's all tied up by a very sterling effort by the Soviet in real classy way, the way they have that puck zinging around there. And now they start in again with Clark. Over on that wing to Ellis with Henderson. Ellis into the corner, shoots it back to the net. A 4-4 tie to indicate how close this game is. Buck is in the corner. The Soviet cleared right onto Bergman. Stickers, Henderson. Oh, what a shot that was. And a great save by Tretriak, who was down low to cover on Henderson's drive. A high loft is checked. Clark tried to center it One out. One minute of play remaining in the second period. Gantoff goes back to the goal. Gantoff for the Soviet. Clears right onto Ellis' stick. Ellis goal is into the corner. USSR. 50 seconds left Number in the second 24. period. Ellis had it momentarily. Clark shoots it into the Assist corner. The Chenko drives it Edison. to the side. Clark is USSR. trying to cover Gantoff. They do mix Bodunov. it up there and Bodunov. they stop the play. Edison. Or a face-off to the left of Tretriak with 35 seconds remaining in the second period of a terrifically hard-fought period. And 
which the Canadian team seemed to have the edge and then faded in the latter part of this period. Foster, we've wanted to say this all along, so I guess we can now call that line of Anderson, Lebedev, and Bodinov the headache line. There's no question about that because they uh, have now worked into even terms. Esposito gets a shot right from the face off there, working it a bit. Close. Reese gets his pass into the corner. It's Cashman trying to dig it out. Cashman plays it out in front. Here's a weak shot that time as Sagankov had Esposito covered. Another try with Cashman trying to dig that puck out. He's a master at that. The puck is knocked back into the corner. They jam there. The Soviets shoot it over on the far side. Yakushev couldn't reach it. The puck goes to center ice. Bergman fell, and Park shot it ahead, and that ends the second period. With the score, Canada 4, and the Soviets 4. This is Game 3 from Winnipeg. Recapping the first two periods, Parisi opened the scoring for Canada from White and Esposito at 154. Petrov tied it up for the Soviet at 316. And at 18.25, Rattel put Canada one up with Bergman and Cornwalle. The shots on goal, Canada 15 and the Soviet 9. In the second period, Esposito scored for Canada at 4.19 from Cashman and Parisi. At 12.56, Harlamov scored for the Soviet from Zagonkov and Mihailov at 13.47. Paul Henderson for Canada and Ellison Clark. At 1459, the Soviet Lebedev from Vasiliev. And at 1828, Bodnov from Anderson to make it a 4-4 tie. Canada outshot the Soviet 16-8 in the second period. Correction, shots on goal in the second Just a period. to the hockey fans at Canada, home viewing these games, you can participate in voting for the most valuable Correct. player on Team Canada, Canada by sending the name Canada of your choice to Box 5050 in Toronto, Montreal, or Vancouver. The winner, as selected by the fans, will receive the Labatt's Best On Ice Award, a 1973 Ford Mustang Grande. Ballots are available from any Labatt representative or Ford dealer in Canada. This third period will be in two 10-minute sections under international rules, and they will change ends at the end of the first 10 minutes. Two teams are getting ready for the struggle here in this last period. They're going into the third period, 4-4 tie. They'll play 10 minutes, then change ends. And that is brought about by European rules when they used to play outside and the weather conditions were a, a factor that's why they split the third period in half now all set Maltsev cleared the puck to the Canadian blue line Ellis starting off with Tark and Henderson still at center ice Brad Park clipped one to Ellis over the line Clark going in right in front of Henderson and his drive was off the target. Here's to Ellis in front, a shot! And Tetriak. Tetriak stopped that one, and Harlamov coming racing back at center. A big burst of speed. Going into the corner, centered it, and it went right to the opposite corner. Henderson going slowly back to his own net, wearing the red helmet. Starting to move now, skating to the blue line. Maltsev stopped him. Bergman at center. Lobbed it into the corner, and the Canadian team make changes. As the puck slides down the ice, Esposito, number seven, goes in front of his own defense. Left it there for Bill White. Stapleton cleared a long one up to the blue line, deflected into the corner. Soviet go rushing to the side. Luchenko jammed on the board. Cashman was there. And Kuskin went in front of his own net, passed ahead to Shadman, goes to Yakushek, who let that shot go from the left side. Yakushek certainly lets that one go hard. Now the Canada come right back, and it's called on the play as the Canadian rush was starting. There's going to be a penalty handed out on this one. 
both players are going to get the gate here and this is what happens so often the Soviets as the play starts to shift up the ice that's when they make their move and it makes you wonder Foster whether they've been watching Gordy Howe play over the years <laughs> looks like Mishikov number 12 is getting the gate for the Soviets now then they'll play a man short five aside 827 left in the first half of the third period. It's a 4-4 tie. Checking still very close and hard. Penalties. USSR, number 12. Mishakov, two minutes for slashes. Canada, number 17. Bill White, two minutes for slashing at one minute and 33 seconds. 133, White and Mishikov off together, and the puck is in the Canadian zone. Puck is back with a goal over to Stapleton, number three. Very cautious, shoots it down the ice. It's going into the corner, back of the net. Lachenko shot it over the wing. Here's a drive by Peter Mahovlich that went off the side. Up to center ice. Cleared over the line, into the corner. Yakushev is stopped by Savard. A clearing pass goes to that far wing. Yakushev into the corner, trying to wiggle his way out from the side. Cleared to Petrov in the corner. He's shunted around on the play by Savard, who went down low to cover. What you have to be very careful of when both teams are playing shorthanded. Granted that they are playing evenly, Good work along the boards here. Look at Savard play the body. Now he's going for the puck with his skates. Good puck control here, taken down by Petrov. And Yakushev comes in and pins it along the boards. As I was saying, when you play shorthanded, it opens up a tremendous amount more ice surface, and it gives the chance for the skating forwards to handle the puck a lot more than they normally would if there were five men out there. From the face-off, the Soviets recover the puck, the pass in front of the net. That was close as Mahalov let that one go. Mahalov came in fast. Harlamov was in on that side, has it again, tearing over to Lechek right in front of the net. And a pass was went off the stick and he couldn't control it. Soviets are pressing here as Stan Makita clears with Cornwallier rushing in, leaving it. The point couldn't control it. Stan Makita digs it out. Here's a shot by LaPointe. It hit the Soviet player. The point was knocked over by Sagankov. Park going back to get it. They're five aside. The pass to Cornwallier. Now to center. LaPointe over to Makita. He couldn't get up in time. Shatilov. Now again. Canada get a chance with Makita. Couldn't control the pass. Bergman waited too long and the teams are full strength again and the puck is shot over the line. Down for Michikov into the Canadian zone. Shot out to Cornwallier. Canadian team at center park five. Weaving around as they change players. Kick pass at center. Clark shoots it in to the corner and Vasiliev plays it over on the right board. Henderson belted the Soviet player with real gusto. Here's another shot. Henderson couldn't see the pass or shot coming from behind him. They're off into the side. In right in front of the net. Oh, the Jack caught that one on Henderson right in front of the net. That was an unconscious save by Tretjak. Bobby Clark has good control. Now watch Tretjak. He has to watch Clark behind the net. He pinned against the post. Not really that aware of Henderson out there, and he makes a terrific save here. Henderson goes right out, parks himself in front of the net. Now look at Trenchak, and he comes up with a terrific glove save and robs Henderson of the go-ahead goal. Henderson really thought he had that one in his mitt. The ice could definitely become a factor here in the third period. It is very wet, it's chippy, and as we've noticed, some of the passes are bouncing. The players are getting a little more cautious on this ice, and they're not going to take the chances with the long pass because they might bounce over the teammate's stick. 
5.44 left in the first half of the third period. It's a 4-4 tie. And Clark, Ellis, and Hen here's a shot wide by Ellis. Went off the target. A high lob cleared it out to center ice. Bill White shot it right back in again. The Chenko, number three, going back for the Soviet. Cleared a forward pass from a high lob to the blue line at center. Over the line, here's a shot. Into the corner, Maltsev went racing in back of the net. A high loft is trying to dig it out, but he's covered on the play by White. With the score, Canada four and the Soviets four. This is game three from Winnipeg. The face off will be to the right. The Canadian goal is the puck is shot to the corner. It's into the Pat Stapleton played it off. Henderson stick right out to the Soviet line. Luchenko cleared it to his own line. Now the Canadian team rushed in there with Henderson getting it and was turned right around on the play. Puck is back at center. On a change of players, Esposito is out there now with Mihailov, 13, going to the blue line to center ice. Harlamov was unable to get the pass and Bill White Shoots it back of the net. Parisi driving it out to center. Recovered by the Soviet. A high lob tipped it right back to Kuskin. Kuskin, number four, giving it to Maltsev, number ten. He lost it. Another try for the Soviet down the left side. Mahailov couldn't get very far. Another try, this time by Gusev. He made a rink-wide pass. It's deflected to the boards on this side. Chadron was unable to control it, and Gusev starts Mishikov at his own blue line. He's partially stopped. Mishikov picked up the pass from Gusev. Yakushev going in. They failed to get a shot. Chadron's pass and shot accepted by Castro. Down that left wing. Canada attacking. Cashman shoots. And the drive was high and off the glass. Akashev to Shadron. Shadron going over the line. The backhand was stopped when it hit escape. Up the cleared out at center ice. Esposito drove it into the corner after Stapleton's pass. On that far wing, Shadron was stopped. Mahovlich. Frank Mahomet goes into the corner, centered it, back to the blue line, driven into the corner, back to the net. No one is there, and the Soviet recover with Shadron clearing to center ice. Another drive by Canada, Samar, with Rattel offside, and there'll be a face-off at the blue line. It's pretty to watch Savard handle that puck. He has such good control of it. His head's always up. And he knew exactly what he was doing there when he laid that puck over just a shade offside. Now they assume it have Anderson at center ice. Bodnov is on the left wing as a slider goes to Vasiliev. Still bouncing around there. Anderson couldn't get away. Now it's a slider over to Bodnov. And they're checking very, very closely. Shadilov played it off the boards. Anderson couldn't get a drive on the goal, but it hit his skate. And the Canadian team shoot it down the ice. Petjak just played it back of the net. Mahomlich, but no one was there to get it. Lebedev cleared over the line. Kubotnov, a long shot, went wide. Canadian team trying to get that puck out, but they're having a hard time. It slides to the blue line. Finally, Cornwallier drove one off a leg. That's Vasiliev playing it over on this side to Botnov. A rink-wide pass to the far wing to Lebedev. Back again to Shatilov. And they're passing that puck around. Canada intercept. And it's LaPointe. Now out there with Park, going in on that left side, took a jolt from Vasiliev. But the Soviet player, Shatilov, in possession, ahead to Harmelov. There they moving in over the line, a close call there 
as Maltsev couldn't get his shot away. Then Harlamov gets that puck again, going back to the goal. Centered at the shot, is off to the side and bounces to the blue line. Another drive is wide. Harlamov on that far wing. Lost it. Put the Canadian players to the line. Harlamov going in. Passed it right in front of the net. And it was stopped there. Oh, that was close as Park. Got in behind the goalkeeper to make that save. Harlamov makes a fantastic move at the blue line here. Deking to the inside there. Now look at this play as he goes in. This is a sure goal and out of nowhere comes Brad Park and takes it right out of the Canadian's net. Tony Esposito was beaten there on a good play. Brad Park saves the goal. 102 left in the first 10 minutes of the there third is period. A 4-4 four four tie. The first Canada on the, the attack. Cashman is going in back of the goal. To the opposite side. 47 seconds remaining in the first half. Parisi is jammed against the boards. The pass came in front of the goal but was not effective. Harlamov going down fast with the Mihailov. Mihailov is stopped by Park and knocked down. The puck is to the blue line from Lechenko to Maltsev. Into the corner. Bergman is trying to squeeze him out. Mihailov rushes over, centers it. No one is there. And Canada cleared out Cashman, driving it off the boards, down the ice. And it's called for icing. Any coach will tell you, when you're not sure about where to pass the puck, it never hurts to ice it or trap it along the boards and take that extra whistle. It's a lot better than making a bad pass and possibly costing your team a goal. Wayne Cashman tried to hit Parise, but wasn't that upset when it went the full length for icing. Soviet playing every man up here. Team first full strength, 13 seconds remaining in the first half of the third period. A 4-4 tie. Petrov is going to move in on the circle with Yakushev and Mishakov. Puck slides in front of the goal. Pat's table then is on the move. Played it off the boards. Valle tried to move in there fast but didn't get that puck. Soviet cleared right back. Bill White going back and it's icing and it's called. With the score, Canada Ladies four and, and the Soviets four. This is game three from game Winnipeg. Canada. They have changed ends. The Soviet to our left now. Canada to the right. And they're coming in with Yakushev shooting one wide. Petrov tried to get the rebound off the board. Spertel lost it. It's centered back to Gusev at the blue line. The shot hit. Bill White skate. And he played it to the side. Mahovlich tearing it back to Stapleton. Canada sent every man up now. Stapleton at the blue line. Played it ahead. Retell was in there with Cornwaye, but it was offside. Foster, it's going to be tough tonight to pick the most valuable player from each team because this game has been as close as the score, and I really don't know who they're going to pick because I wouldn't want to have that problem. Well, it was, it's certainly uh, been a team uh, game all the way through. Both teams have been relying on team effort rather than individual effort. That Petrjak has certainly... Uh, been putting on a great show there uh, three or four times uh, Canadian players were in close but he always seemed to be able to grab that puck now Esposito at center gets it back to Stapleton over on the right side to White and Cashman was given a jolt there and I'm sure there will be a receipt on that Cashman going in with a backhand Petriak was happening on that then that Parisi jams the Soviet player here, Parisi and Vasiliev mixing it up a bit. They haven't uh, hit anybody, but it was close. Shadalov really gave Wayne Cashman a good check. There's a look at Bobby Hall sitting up there with Mr. Benny Haskins to his left. The Canadians are getting a little incensed here. Phil Esposito. has been given, I believe, Foster, a misconduct penalty, and this could hurt Canada very much this stage of the game. Wayne Cashman, it was inevitable that Cashman would come back 
at number 14, Shadilov, gave him a good stiff check. Unfortunately, the referee was standing right behind him. As so often happens, it's not the initial check that the referees see, it's often the retaliation. In this case, Wayne Cashman will pay the price. He's gone to the dressing room too. Uh, so we'll see uh, just what uh, is the official on this, whether... Punition, Equipe Canada. Penalty, Team Canada, Wayne Cashman, number 14. Two minutes for slashing, 10 minutes misconduct at 10.44. Punition, Equipe Canada, le numéro 14, Wayne Cashman. Two minutes pour avoir cinglé et 10 minutes de mauvaise conduite à 10 minutes 44. Cashman is off and Stan Makita is taking his place. So apparently he was cut on the last play. Well, this is definitely going to hurt Team Canada because they need Cashman to get that puck out of the corners and he has played a terrific game so far and he'll be a big loss to Team Canada with 9-16 remaining in the game. That'll be a slashing penalty by Cashman, but you could tell that Cashman was going to try and get even after he had been hit hard. So now Canada will be a man short. And it's in the latter part of this third period, which is very tense and exciting at this stage. The puck is still in the Soviet zone. Lechenko lost it to Peter Mahovlich. He tried to center Esposito who had argued on that last penalty, didn't get any penalty as uh, was indicated. Buck is back on this right side. So can't go. Failed to get anywhere. And it's back to Trichak. And the Soviet are regrouping again. They have the odd man advantage. Here they move up now. Five is pressed as they go up over the line to try the sweeping play. And Harlamov tried his, uh, with Maltsev shooting there, went, it went right over the net. That could have been a very dangerous play as the Canadians' defense backed up a little bit too far. They thought that Maltsev was going to pass the puck off, and Maltsev was driving for those two hash marks between the circles. And when you're there, that's the time to shoot. Only a good deflection got the puck up and out of play. Maltsev moved right in there. Harlamov was right on the left side there, close to him, and they're a dangerous pair. Harlamov gets that puck back. Zagankov couldn't control it. Zagankov going to the blue line, number seven, and it's tapped now to Mihailov. Here comes the Soviet again, a dangerous rush. Mihailov from the corner, goes back to the net, played it over to Maltsev, 10, to the blue line, to Zagankov, back to Maltsev. His pass is knocked by Bergman, and Bergman swung his stick at him. There's a roller right in front of the net. And it's stopped there by Tony Esposito. The Soviets trying to establish puck control. This is what they do so well. They keep it to the outside of the box. Good puck control. Back to Zagankov, key defenseman on their power play. Bergman has it deflected here, comes back to Maltsev. And Tony Esposito makes two big saves stopping the initial shot, and then the rebound. There's coach Bob Rob on his left, Kulagan. All set to go for the faceoff. Maltz have knocked it to the corner. It's back of the goal for Park. There's no overtime in this game or any in the series. Now Maltz have getting a chance. Pass near right in on goal. A slider went right across the goal mode. It went right behind Asposito, but it didn't go in. Bergman is desperately trying to get that puck away. He did. A Goes down the ice. Esposito steps on the ice. No and they're changing on the, the goal. Savard is coming out with Lapointe. Soviets move up. Four abreast at center ice. Coming in on the right side. Harlamov. Pass back to the blue line. Off to the side. Goes behind the goal and over onto the swing. Now they're the high loft. Trying to dig it out from the side. Played it back to the blue line. Here's a shot. He bounced it over on the wing. Hit a leg. Knocked out by Makeda. A race for him. Down for Esposito. Right in. And the shot was stopped by Trutak. 
again the Soviet come back with Maltsev in center. Over the line. He stops. Now they're going to draw that pattern play. Intercepted by Cornwaye. Going down low. Around on that side. Into the corner. Centered it out. He touched it but couldn't deflect it. And the puck is shot down the ice. Boston, you just couldn't see better hockey anywhere in the world than we're seeing right here. The people in Winnipeg have seen a lot of top international hockey, and I'm sure this is the greatest game that any of these fans at this game have ever seen. And reminding you, with 6.29 left in regu regulation play, there's no overtime. Rat Bertel gets a draw, fired a shot, it's, oh, that was close. Now the Soviet breakout again at center ice. Teams at full strength. But bounces off the goalkeeper, goes to the side, open. A pass, went off the skate, cleared out on the right wing. And Lebedev trying to get the good line out there for the Soviet. And they're offside with Vodnov going in ahead of the play. This is one of the few lines of the Soviets. Of course, this is their first game in this series. But they played all last year together as a unit, and it definitely shows out here. They know exactly what each member of the line can do and will do at a particular moment. Anderson, Lebedev, 23, and Bodnov, 24. Out there for the Soviet, Frank Mahovlich, but for talent center, Gordon Wye on the other wing. Stapleton goes back to the Canadian goal. Played it to Mahovlich. Frank Mahovlich over on the wing to Gordon Wye. It bounces into the Soviet zone. Shadlov on the defense, and it's called as the icing call. Or rather, on the offside. 546. 546. It appears in that last scramble that Gila Point had to leave the ice with a full muscle. Don't know whether we'll see him back in the game or not. Bill White is playing up at the center red line. Pat Stapleton is showing the referee some water or snow back to the net. I was commenting on this earlier, Foster. What Stapleton was pointing out is that to the back of the Canadian's net, there is a chunk of ice of about two feet long running along the boards that has come right out. With the score, Canada four and the Soviets four. This is game three from Winnipeg. They've had some trouble. They've had some trouble with the ice. They put the ice into the Winnipeg Arena only a few days ago. Apparently this summer, Foster, they put in new machines in here, and I'm sure that they're still ironing out a few of the bugs uh, on the ice surface. And at the back of Canada's uh, goal, all along the boards there, the ice has been very bumpy in the practices. In fact, sheets of ice have come right up, and now they are coming out to repair it because it's all important for puck control when that puck is bouncing around the, the boards on a shot and if it starts to bounce uh, it could be very critical to Team Canada's position in this end. Well this might be a good time to recap the first two periods. Canada opened the scoring at 154 the first period. Parisi from White and Esposito at 316. Petrov tied it up for the Soviet. And at 18.25, Rattel put Canada one up from Berkman and Quart Y.A. for a two to one lead for Canada at the end of the first period. Canada outshot the Soviet 15 to nine in that first period. Then in the second period, at 4.19, Esposito scored for Canada from Cashman and Parisi. At 12.56, Harlamov scored for the Soviet from Sagankov and Mihailov. At 13.47, Paul Henderson for Canada from Ellis and Clark. At 14.59, Lebedev from Vasiliev. That was a shot from the blue line that bounced off Lebedev into the net when it appeared as if it had gone off a Canadian player. And at 18.25, Bodinov scored the tying goal from Anderson to make it 4-4 at the end of the second period. And Canada outshot the Soviet in that second period, 16-8. This break in the action uh, with five minutes, just over five minutes remaining in the game, could be just what Team Canada needs. This, the pace of this game has been tremendously fast, and 
this little rest right now could give them a good chance. Looking at another highlight here, we see Maltsev break up the ice with good puck control. The puck ends up going back into the point here. And Harlamov makes a good move here coming out, gets that puck back to the point. Good shot. This is the Soviet puck control. They want to keep a hold of that puck. They have good anticipation. Now here's that move to the inside, and that was a beautiful move. And if he not just drilled that puck a little harder, they would have scored. From the face-off, the puck is at center ice. Mishakov is driving it in and back of the goal. Esposito stopped it back of the net. Frank Mahovlich over on the left side. Rattel, Rattel at center ice. Flipped it on into the corner. Mishakov covering him. The puck is there. Mishakov is knocked over. Petrov, 16, goes into the corner. Harnwaii couldn't stop but slide right back to Bill White in the Canadian zone. It's a 4-4 tie, no overtime. And Bill White failed to get out when checked by Mishakov. He's trying to dig it out, but he was held against the boards by Rattel and Bill White. At this stage of the game, when that puck gets along the boards, you have to trap it. You can't take a chance of making a blind pass. Bill White, an experienced defenseman, would never take that chance, traps it. Now it does set up a face-off in your end, but it's a lot better than making an errant pass out into that center zone. Esposito going out there for center for Canada. Peter Mahovlich is on one wing and Parisi is on the other. Petrov 16 at center for the Soviet. Kuskin cleared it back of the net. Soviets still have it, center it. And it's blocked by Esposito, who's on the move. He was up to the blue line, still going. And it's recovered by Mishikov. Coming back at center, Mishikov cleared on the left wing. The pass is deflected. Bergman rushes back on a three-man drive with Esposito, who takes the pass. Going up with Park on the far side. The shot hit the side of the net. Bounce to the corner. It's Peter Mahovlich trying to go back to the goal, trying to center it, but blocked. Mishikov fights for that puck, rolled it to the blue line, helped by Petrov. Mishikov at center, over the line, the shot bounded off Park, cleared over onto the left wing. Not out, though. Yakushev failed to get a chance. Kluskin. Back to the blue line for the Soviet, number four. Makes a rink wide pass. Starting to weave a bit. Harlamov got it over to Maltsev. Maltsev into the corner. Berkman failed to stop him. Pass comes out to Park. On the left side, Parisi couldn't go through. And the Canadian team are changing on the goal. Another rush by Harlamov, down the right side. He's closing in, made the pass to, against the boards. A long shot, and the shot is up there by Tony Esposito by line, right in front of the net. Harlamov makes another one of those classic moves, and I have to give him in my mind after this move. He has been the best player for the Soviets tonight. He has a shift that is almost unbeatable. He comes down that ice, he put a move on Pat Stapleton, that Stapleton was just lunging at him after he'd gone by him. 328 left in the game, 4-4 tie. The puck goes to the blue line. Soviet take a shot. The stop by Esposito. Stapleton cleared it out at center. The Chico lost it. It goes over the line. Clark tried to follow and missed it. A return right by the Soviet. Coming up over the line. Hylov drive high off the boards, partially intercepted by Henderson, goes to Maltsev, it's cleared off to the corner to Savar, Clark pass, blocked at center ice by Zagankov, Zagankov couldn't get his shot away and bumped into the board, Savar, for Canada, lobbed it out to center, Henderson getting in on breakaway, right in, and went wide. Great chance there. Now another chance for Bill as he waited too long. Mihailov gets the end of the center ice. 
They're going in. Park Palomar fell, but gets it above Sam. Stop and clear to the wing. Still trying to get that puck out. It bounced out to center ice. 215 left in the game. That table that leads the run. Going down alone, trying to go through the defense. Knocked Tagankov over. Soviet Cup racing back with a long shot, intercepted at center. Park goes right back, there's the drive off Jackson's leg. Vasiliev tried to clear, it's in the corner. Mark Y.A. couldn't cover his man, and the puck was shot down the ice. Bergman is back first, and beat Mishikov to it. Canadian team clear out, went out, and he tried to go knock it back in. 1.33 left in the game. 4-4 tie. There'll be no overtime with the tie score. Valerie Vasiliev, a 23-year-old defenseman who has played a tremendous game tonight for the Soviets. Going back into his end to pick up a helmet, which had been knocked off him earlier. And we'll see youth movement for the uh, Soviets in this game tonight that seems to pick the Soviet team up. Renoye trying to get going, passed it right on to Mishikov's stick, but he couldn't get anywhere. Back for Vasiliev. The Soviets start right back in center line, and Mishikov will stop. Now Kuskin clears over on the far side, and it would appear as if the Soviet was trying to hold out of that tie. Here's a quick pass to Petrov, over on to the side. Mishikov fired one back in the net. Bergman recovers with one, one minute, minute left of in the play game. remaining in and the game. Ronwaye down the left side. A stop. And the puck went over the glass into the crowd. The face off on the rim of the circle. Foster, you couldn't see better hockey anywhere. I just can't get over the pace that they're keeping up. They played 59 minutes of hockey and they're going at it as if it were the opening minute of the game. Phil Esposito. I've never seen him work harder. He's playing probably as good hockey right tonight as he's played in his life. It's been a tremendous game, no question about it, and it's been very evenly played. With Canada having the advantage in the first half, and the Soviet coming back to edge the Canadian team to get a 4-4 tie with 53 seconds remaining. There's been little to choose between the two teams. Asposito. Get it, trying to get the draw, had it momentarily, lost it. Soviet breakout at center ice. Harlamov tipped it towards the goal from the corner. Greasy is covering on the side, lost it. Harlamov drove one wide to the far side. Ellis, there to Esposito. Coming down on that far wing, fired a shot. Right front of the net. What a chance Greasy had right in on top of the goal. Back comes the Soviet on the right side. Over the line for Harlamov. Turned aside. Mihailov centered out. A shot. And again, another great save this time by Tony Esposito. What a save by Esposito. Maltsev gets a good backhand away here. Again, Harlamov. Always tough to handle. Good puck control. It bounces out now. Maltsev's out of our screen. Good backhand. Esposito, a big save late in the game. 13 seconds to go. At this stage, Foster, in a game, you want to make sure you don't do anything defensively that will cost you the game. You'll be happy to get out of a game like this with a tie. Certainly been a number of close calls in this one at either end. Goalkeeping has really been tremendous. Petrov is ready for the faceoff for the Soviet. Got the draw, but was not back to Bergman. Bergman is grabbed by Petrov and hauled down. The puck is in the corner. Bergman ran at his check. Petrov, and the puck is back in the corner. The high loft covered, and the game is over. And it ended in a 4-4 tie. Canada 4, the USSR 4, and that's a fair appraisal of a tremendous struggle. Two teams are tired, but put up a tremendous effort. But the final score, Canada 4 and the Soviets 4.
This is Game 3 from Winnipeg. With our hockey history so rich. И зная, что у этой игры прекрасное будущее. Dans un sport que l'avenir transforme. And the future of the game evolving. Мы возвращаемся на арену. Nous voici de retour à l'endroit même. We return to the arena. Где все началось. 30 лет тому назад. Où tout a commencé, voilà 30 ans. Where it all began, 30 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, dames et gaspada, welcome to the Team Canada Luncheon and welcome to the Luzhniki Sports Palace, home to some of the most exciting hockey ever played. His Excellency, Vladimir Putin, President of the Russian Federation, and the Right Honorable Jean Chrétien, Prime Minister of Canada. We are honored to have with us today some of the hockey legends from the now famous 1972 series. Representing Canada, Representant le Canada, Canada President Yvan Cormoyer, 
Serge Savard, Robert Seeley, and Senator Frank Mahov. Representing Russia, representing la Russie, Russia представляют Alexander Maltsev, Boris Mikhail, Alexander Pavlovich Agulin, Vladimir Shabin, I now invite Prime Minister Jean Chrétien and President Vladimir Putin to join these hockey legends on stage. In the spirit of the hockey traditions between our two countries, I now invite our leaders to exchange the sweaters of our 2002 Olympic hockey teams. Yes, right here. Mr. Esposito, as the uh, ISIS leader of the team, what kind of pressure were you feeling after, obviously, the game in Vancouver and as you were preparing to go overseas? Uh, what kind of thoughts were going through your mind as being a good leader to communicate to the team? Well, what, yes, what kind of pressure, what kind of thoughts were going through my mind as we went overseas? Um, you look, I often said, my dad used to say this all the time, you know, son, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink the water. And I never thought about that as a leadership thing. I mean, and I can tell you this, they were, and he was one of them. And I remember after the first game in uh, Russia, there was Paul, myself, and maybe three or four other guys saying, I don't think we're going to lose again. I really don't believe we're going to lose this thing. And we're going to win it. And we had the confidence of that. Look, what happened in Vancouver was I got picked to star. And to tell you the truth, I was really tired of the booing. And because here we were, giving up our summers, giving up everything that we had. We didn't know from this. And I remember saying to Paul as I'm going out, I said, I'm going to give somebody a piece of my mind today. And I really never knew what I, was, what I said until 1982 was when we had our first reunion. In 10 years, when I came up and I saw the tape and I went, and I, I got a little embarrassed by it. And I still do when I watch it. Because if you think about it, I think I repeated, I really believe, I really believe, I really believe, I sound like Elmer Fudd for crying out loud. I, he was the undisputed leader on the team, on and off the ice. And I would say to you today, the finest period of hockey ever played by a hockey player was the third period of the last game in Moscow. This man scored the first goal and he set up the other two. I think it was the finest period of hockey ever played. And you see, that's what leadership is all about. Leadership goes out, yeah, you can talk it, but you make it happen. He made it happen. It wasn't until we got back until, and then it was probably, I would say none of us even, knew it at that time. And it wasn't, it wasn't until years later, I would say, the last four or five years, maybe because of the end of the millennium, like I'm recognized more today. I mean, I, people come up to me, I can't go into a restaurant, I can't do anything anymore, where I would say five or six years after the, you know, the series, I could probably move around fairly significantly. And so it's just, it's gained actually, it's gained momentum. And I guess as we look back and now, the team of the century, the sports moment of the century. Not all bad. That's Not bad. all bad. <laughs> That's wild, man. Yeah. You, you, yes, you have to, just one, you have to understand, it wasn't a fun time. Phil talked about it being a war over there. It was a war. And, and we came back emotionally and mentally drained. And uh, it was a tough time recovering. The one, one good thing about it, we had 
some comrades in arms here that we've, 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 we've a lifelong bond with, but coming out of there, we would never think about that thing. We just, we just want to get out of there. Dick, I'm going to make a, a statement here that the reason that I really believe that we won and, and we did come back in Russia, it's basically because the type of character of the players that were on this team. So all the people that you've honored here today uh, played a, a role and a very important role. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, you know it. Thank you very much. Uh, it means a lot to us. Um, just to share with you what uh, Jean-Paul and I were, were with Ivan, and as you know, between the three of us, we won 10 Stanley Cups, you know. And Ivan won 10. <laughs> so, when he mentioned the Stanley Cup before, we never had the highs of having played for the Canadians or even for the Maple Leafs or, you know, the, there's only a few teams that won the Stanley Cups in our years, right, JP? During 13 years, my 13 years, three, three teams won the Stanley Cup. So, to, of which. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, answer the, to answer the question, um, when we found out that we had a chance to represent our country and to play for Team Canada and to, to have this kind of challenge and to play with all the best players in the world, I was thrilled. 